Right, okay then chaps, this next section 5.4, something we've mentioned several times as we're going along, cooling. Massive, massive issue for PCs and CPUs in particular. So, as we've already said, CPU temperature, massive problem. Obviously it's containing loads and loads of switches inside there which are constantly going on off, on off, on off, on off, on off, on off, up to 2.8 billion times a second. So these things are going like crazy. The CPU will get very, very hot. Remember that process I mentioned to you earlier called the DX4? The Intel 486DX4, which was clocked how many times? Three. Three? Yeah, remember this one? DX2 was two times, DX4 was three times. If you put a cup of water on top of that, the water would boil. That's how hot that processor got. So I'm not exaggerating when I'm talking about this stuff. It gets very, very hot. The kind of operating or the maximum temperature for one of these CPUs is 185 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the maximum. However, the normal operating temperature is around about 70 degrees. Obviously, it's your job, or more accurately, the fan's job, to keep it from getting to there. And it needs to keep it around about this nice even 70 degrees. So we are talking high, high temperatures here to the extent of being able to burn you if you mess around with them just after you turn the machine off. So when we talk about cooling fans and everything, it's not just a light issue. You've got to get as much heat away from that processor as you can. And bear in mind, this is actually what's limiting the performance of the processor. Bar none, the performance of the processor could massively exceed what it does at the moment. And they've proven that by cooling processes with liquid nitrogen. If you put a liquid nitrogen cooling system on top of a processor and get that to cool it, let's forget the fact that it costs 15 grand for that cooling system. Yeah, if you get that to cool it, then you can run these processes at mega speeds. Now again, you can achieve similar performance benefits by just getting four of them. So it's not beneficial, or cost, but they've proven it as a science that it will go faster and faster and faster until the temperature gets too high. So that's without a doubt without a doubt the biggest thing. So heat sinks is our first thing and this one's quite <laughs> quite nicely got a red glow about it. I'm not quite sure if it's red hot or whether it's just uh, red painted. But this particular thing here is a heat sink. The main role of a heat sink is to try and draw heat away from the processor itself. And what it does is it just provides a large surface area so that the heat can be spread out amongst that heatsink. I've got loads of examples of these down here. Let me show you this first one on the video here. Now this particular one is built into this processor. It's called an IHS, an integrated heatsink. IHS, integrated heatsink. This processor that I'm looking at here is a Pentium 3. And there's our heatsink. You can see it's integrated because it's literally attached to it physically. Now, this heatsink is literally nothing special. It's just a metal, um, metal surface, which is a very, very large surface area. The whole purpose of that being is that it spreads the heat out across that surface area so that when you blow cold air on it, there's more surface area to actually dissipate that heat completely. Heatsink is a big, big part of cooling a processor, and you simply must have them. I mean, look at this. The heatsink is, if I hold it up to this camera, the heatsink is a good three or four times the size of the actual processor itself. And you can see that. Heat sinks, massive thing. You've got to make sure you have one of these. And again, same I mean, there's, there's nothing to break in a heat sink. It's just a piece of metal. But there is one thing about heat sinks which can cause major problems. They won't break, but be very, very wary of this. You must have a seal in between the processor itself and the heat sink. And that's called a thermal compound. And it's literally like a paste substance. It's in the notes here. I've just mentioned it. Where is it? There it is, a thermal compound. It's also known, just be wary of this acronym as a TIM, a thermal interface material. Thermal interface material. And it literally is a paste, a glue, or a sticker that has a, like a double-sided sticky tape. The whole purpose of that is, is to create a good contact between the processor and the heatsink, so that all the heat goes directly into the heatsink absolutely essential you have these things. Believe me, when you buy a new computer, take your CPU heatsink fan off and check. Because the amount of times I've done that and it simply wasn't there is incredible. Because think about the manufacturing process that these companies are going through. There's a guy on the production line who's got to do that and 
they miss it every now and again or they don't put it on properly or they just go or the robot just goes and it doesn't really do a good seal and obviously on your process you want to make sure there's a good seal so every time you buy a new machine quickly take it off have a look at it see you'll sometimes find a little tiny bit of paste there go to a PC shop, get some thermal compound, squirt it all over the top of the processor and boom. Obviously not too much so it starts messing around with the circuitry but make sure there's a good contact between your processor itself and the actual heatsink. Very important. Can that compound uh, dry up? It can but hopefully it will dry in contact with the processor. And, and this is a, it's actually a very good point because when you, if it has dried up and you take the heatsink off, then you've just totally messed up your compound. So then there'll be bits on the heatsink, there'll be bits on the processor, and it just won't, when you put it back, it will never get a good seal. So make sure you scrape it off with a razor blade, scrape it off the processor very carefully, very carefully on the processor. Don't, <laughs> don't start gouging it away with some sort of, you know, screwdriver or whatever, because then you're just going to damage the processor. And um, yeah, we'll clean it all off, put a new one on, slap it back on, and off you go. So yeah, it can, it can dry up, and you've got to be quite careful of that. Now, of course, it's no good just having a heatsink, although on some processes it's sufficient. If you're after, a, for example, well, go back to my mate who was using his system in his, in his lounge for the media system. He just wanted it to play music. Remember, he took his fan off his CPU completely, and he just put a mega heatsink on it. Yeah? Because he didn't want the system to be noisy. He didn't want the fans turning. But remember, he was only using it to stream music. He wasn't using it to play games, so the processor was just going, OK, more, more music more music. Well, in fact, the processor wasn't doing anything because it was a DMA system. You with me? Direct memory access, so it was just talking directly to the memory. The memory is putting the amount of sound through the sound card. It's bus mastering, so it's going straight to the sound card. Out it goes. Florin, the CPU, is just sitting there going, God, what's the point of me being here, is there? I'm not doing anything. You with me? So it's quite happy for him to stay at that temperature. No reason for a fan on those systems, but never, 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 rec I do not recommend that. Remember what my friend did. First thing he did was got that heat temperature sensor, and he shoved it inside his machine so that he could see exactly the core temperature. And as soon as that started to go up, he knew, no, 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 let's get it down. So he did it. He played a game on it just to see what happened. Playing this, like, quake or whatever on it. Temperatures, ding, 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 and he thought, okay, better stop. <laughs> and he turned the game off, and you just literally see it come back down again. Obviously, for corporate machines, servers, fan, 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 gotta have fans. So, fan units. Of course, they're 12 volt, these fan systems, because they are have moving parts inside them. What have you got to be careful about with fans, guys? They're drawing air into the computer, so what have you got to be careful about? Dust. Dust. Grime bits and fibers from carpets and so on. If they jam, what happens to the fan? Stop turning. Stops turning. And it can go on with us. I like that. Because then what does the CPU do? A as well. So yeah, be very, very wary of these things. You've got to have these things going. So it's, you've got to make sure you have a good fan and a good heat sink to get the combination actually running. Now you can go to extremes if you wish to. I personally have never done it. I've never found the need to. But hey, if you want to have one if you want to have a fish tank sitting on top of the machine, you can do. You can do some liquid or chemical cooling. Very, very special. To be honest, guys, you simply do not need to do this. If you want to have a mega-powered machine, there are better ways of achieving better power than by simply cooling your CPU more. You with me? If you want to have a mega machine, get a quad processor machine with four processors and four gig of RAM. Believe me, that will be more powerful than one that's liquid-cooled. But it's a gimmicky thing. People like to do it. You know, these guys at home like to drill mach holes in the side of their cases and literally put a tank of water, water, electricity. Fundamental lesson I learned at primary school. Water, electricity, good, bad? Bad. Bad. But you do do this. You get a water tank, put it on top of your, uh, on top of your case, pipes feed that water inside your computer, directly to the CPU on top of the motherboard. You have to seal it all up, obviously, to make sure water doesn't go everywhere. Now, I don't know about you, but just my gut feeling about doing that, pouring water, effect, yeah, <laughs> let's not say pouring, because I don't want you to go home and pour a jug of water on your PC, you know, trying to hold, cool it down. But feeding water onto your CPU is, is one way of cooling the chip, but fundamentally, I have a problem with it, because you're feeding water into an electrical system. Not good. There are better ways of improving your system. But hey, be aware of it. 